The great French gastronome Briat Savarin once said, Tell me what you eat and I will tell you what you are. I'm Jamie Schler, welcome to Stir Crazy, where I'll be talking food with the most intriguing people who you least expect to talk about food. Today's guest, once described by the Washington Post as a dazzling virtuoso, was appointed assistant principal cellist of the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra in the fall of 2013. And if I've calculated correctly, he was just 24 years old. He also serves as cellist for the New Orleans-based chamber ensemble Lyrica Baroque. He began playing the cello before he was five years old and eventually came to play in or with some of the world's leading orchestras, opera houses, and music festivals around the world. He has also earned the nickname The Gourmet Cellist since being chief guest host on The Food Show on New Orleans' WWL Radio. He also creates and hosts special events in collaboration with New Orleans' best restaurants, such as the famed Commander's Palace, to bring out the parallels between food and music. He is also the host of the podcast, Talking Beats. And I'm really pleased to have Daniel Lelchuk here with me today. Welcome to my kitchen, and thanks for having me in yours. It's great to be here. Great to see you, Jamie. Thank you so much. Tell me about your kitchen. That's a fantastic kitchen. Are you, in, are you at your house in New Orleans? I am in New Hampshire right now. And I'm, I'm overlooking a lake, and uh, I, I see the loons out there, and uh, it's, it's, it's a nice, typical New England gray summer day. Perfect for, uh, for being in the kitchen with you. And um, just for the listeners, if you want to see some images of his... See, you're looking loons, and I'm getting loonies, because I have all the youths that, like, pass on their, on their motos out the window. Follow Daniel on Instagram. I think it's Daniel.Lelchuk, is that right? Exactly, exactly, yes. On Instagram, right. And you'll see some great pictures of his, I guess, your parents' home in New, in New Hampshire, right? This is actually, uh, this is a, a family lake house. That it's, it's near where I grew up, and my brother comes in from California in the summers, and I come in from New Orleans or from wherever I'm playing concerts, and uh, my, my folks are both very nearby, and so we, it's just a special time to be here. We do lots of cooking and uh, lots of uh, uh, sort of activities. I, I, of course, record podcasts and practice the cello around here, so it's, it's a nice idyllic setting, although it does get cold and rainy, you know, a lot of 50-degree days pouring rain, but that's okay. Oh, that's okay, especially after if, if you come from New Orleans where it must, it's boiling hot in the summer. <laughs> w way too hot, way too hot, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a fl I'm a Floridian, so I know that heat, that damp, oh. that... that damp heat. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I I got to know you actually thanks to my first podcast guest, Malcolm Nance, because I contacted him and said, what do you think about being on a food podcast? And he said, well, I was on a classical music podcast, so I'm up for anything. <laughs> and so he told me about Talking Beats, and I pulled it up and I found the episode with him, which was great fun and um, listened to it a few times. Of course, I had to research him. And then I got hooked on your podcast. Um, and it's, I'm always kind of glad that I thought of my concept for this podcast of talking about food with non-food professionals. So no one would think I copied your concept <laughs> because that's basically what you do. <laughs> you have non music professionals and you end up talking about music which i is a whole discussion i want to have later in the podcast so we'll we'll talk about that afterwards um i always bake f i always cook and bake first with my guests so we're going to dive right in and then chat while it's in the oven are you ready great great i'm ready okay so we're making um well when i asked you if what you wanted to cook or bake. You said that you are a cook and not a baker. So you wanted to ba try baking something. I yes. suggested we do something it Italian because we'd both lived in Italy. And you said, no, 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 I should do something French since I'm <laughs> in France. So again, since I follow you on Instagram and I know that you enjoy an aperitivo with friends, glass of wine, cocktails before dinner, I thought... We'll bake something, but we'll bake something savory that you can serve with your aperitif in the afternoon. So we're making gougere. Have you ever made gougere? 
Never. Uh, I've eaten them and I love them. Oh, good. Okay, so for <laughs> uh, those of you out, out in stir-crazy land, Gougere are cheese puffs, fancy French name for, for cheese puffs. But what's great about this recipe is that the base is a pâte à choux, a choux pastry, um, which are those little puffs. And it's basically, you'll see it's butter, flour, eggs, and that's and a, a liquid like mi milk or water. And um, they're, very ba they're very neutral in flavor. They're very plain. So you can make them, and then you can make them into sweet. You can fill them with whipped cream or pastry cream for cream puffs. You can glaze them. Uh, the French make chouquette, which is basically just you put a little egg wash on it, and you put pearl sugar on top, and you bake them. Um, you can make profiterole. You fill it with ice cream, and you put chocolate sauce on top. And you can make pé de nun. You take them and you mound a little dough on your spoon. You push it off into boiling oil. And they puff up very light, crispy on the outside, light on the inside. And they're called pé de nun, which is nun's farts. Why? Some people call them supier de nun, which is a nun's size. But I kind of like nun's farts better. And so we are adding cheese to make the savory version. So that's the story of Gougère. So once you master choux pastry, you can make anything you want. I've never made choux pastry in my life. In fact, I, I've always been one of those people who's a little afraid of baking, you know, cooking. I've always felt like, well, you know, you can correct it. Oftentimes you can adjust it and, and things. But baking, well, how, how the hell do you fix it if it's broken? And well, recently, actually, I, I should have asked you, but I... <laughs> I didn't want to bother you, but I made, um, I was uh, walking around our, our family property a few miles up the road where I grew up with my brother, and we found all these wild blackberries and said, oh, these look fantastic. <gasps> so, so we picked them all. I said, Saul, his name is Saul, as, as you know, I said, Saul, we have to make a yeah. pie. So we picked lots of great blackberries, and, uh, and he didn't think I could make a really good crust. So I said, I can, because I've done it before. So I made it, and it turned out not so great, actually, the crust. The, the filling was good. Um, but the crust was, uh, it didn't become as flaky as I wished it had, but I should have just phoned you. But at the same time, when it's done, there's nothing really to do. Um, it was good, not great. It was like B, maybe B plus, but no higher. Right. So basically, um, when it comes to pastry, any adjustment you're doing is in the writing of the recipe. So you have to understand before. Once you're in it, you're right. You can't do it. So basically, this Gougere recipe, here's a good example. I made the recipe I used to use 15, 20 years ago that always worked. And I made it two weeks ago to test. And it came out greasy, oily, and it didn't rise. And so I had to readjust the recipe. So I redid the recipe and they came out perfect, which is this recipe we're doing. But once you make the dough and you bake it, all you can do is eat your mess, <laughs> and then make it again. <laughs> so you end well, up, you know, you know, just keep eating these kind of, you know, your trial and errors. <laughs> it, try, yes, exactly. I'm, I, I'm all good with trial and error. It was, it, so, but I'm, I'm ready to go. And you say this is a perfect Gougier recipe. So fingers crossed that it turns out perfectly for me. <laughs> and for me, and for me, because I, I don't want to, yeah put my foot <laughs> in my mouth. Okay, so um, I, I'm trying to get my screen so you can see the stove. We'll see that. So okay. I'm using this size pot, okay? Um, okay, so you have your butter, which is 90 grams. Do you, work, do you work in grams or do you work in... Did you do six tablespoons or 90 grams? I did six tablespoons. Okay. So you're just going to put that in your pan. In fact, I think 90 grams is slightly more than six tablespoons, but that's okay. And I am going to follow my recipe, even though I wrote it, because I just want to make sure. And my son told me his earbuds that he's lending me cannot fall in <laughs> the pot. Um, okay. So I have um, one cup half a cup water and half a cup milk.
and you're going to add that to your butter. One cup total. Some salt, half a teaspoon. And this is unsalted butter you want. Yes. But you're going to put in, a, yeah, a little, bit of, a little bit of salt, about half a teaspoon, more or less. And then optional, I'm going to put in a few grindings of black pepper and a pinch of nutmeg. I'm sure one day for one of my podcasts, whatever I make is going to completely collapse. But for <laughs> now, so far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little black pepper now. Uh, you said yep. r written here is um, uh, grindings of black pepper. O okay, well, I'll put that as a grinding. And then, um, and then yeah. uh, a little nutmeg, yes? Yeah, just a, 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 a small pinch. A, a couple of small pinches. Do you I make have fresh bechamel? nutmeg here. See, see, Jamie, oh. I have fresh nutmeg ready to grind here. <gasps> wow. You know, I've, abs I've actually have never, ever used fresh nutmeg. Well, I'm, I'm doing it knowing that... Um, Someone out there will say, oh, look at that. He's a little serious. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to have something that impresses people. One thing. Okay, that's all in there now. One thing. <laughs> okay, so butter, water, milk, salt, little pepper, pinch up nutmeg in a saucepan. Okay? Yes. Ovens are preheating. So now you're going to place it over about medium-low heat. You want it to heat. You want it to heat until the butter melts, but you don't want to bring it to a boil. So you okay. want to heat it kind of medium low is okay. And just st you know, I just push my butter around to the sur the bottom of the hot pan to to get it going. And I'm using a wooden spoon, like you said. Yeah. I've made these with whisks, and they end up. It just ends up getting stuck in the wick, whisk at some point, so wooden spoon is easier. Okay. Okay, the butter's all melted now on, on mine. I hope that doesn't mean it was too high. Already? Ooh. My ooh, butter's melted. I'll turn it down. Up. Is your... Okay, just take your pot off the heat. Okay. I mean, just, you know... Take it, take it aside. I'm, um, hold on. I'm trying to get mine to go a little faster. <laughs> Does your milk, your milk water, your liquid look like it's steamed a little bit? Uh, there's, there's no steam. Well, a tiny bit of steam coming out as I stir it, as I okay. look at it. But it, it wasn't bubbling at all. No, no, no. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. The most yes. it should do is have slightly little bubbles around the side. But mine basically just has a little bit of steam. Okay, we're going, we're going, come on. It smells good already. I mean, m melted butter on its own yeah, smells pretty good, right? Yeah, this is definitely right? one <laughs> of... Right. Well, you know, fresh butter is like, is like cu freshly cut eggplant. It has very little... F I, I love smelling them because there's a, a very subtle but very kind of fresh smell to it. I see, yeah, yeah. I'm one of those weird people. Well, this that, is all. So yeah. th this is off the heat now. I'm just stirring it, but it's there's bits of steam coming out. Okay, good. I'm trying to get mine to go a little faster. Okay, because we want to dump in our flour. You have your cup of flour ready, right? Yes, I have. I have the flour ready. I have the eggs ready, and. Okay, good. I don't know why mine's ta Oh, maybe mine is a heavier. The Le Creuset takes a little bit longer to heat up. That, that's right. I'm not using a Le Creuset. I, I should be because you're, you're in France and they're, and they're so good. But 
<laughs> is, is that your go-to? Is that Get your go-to, or, or or do you like Staub uh, or Le Creuset? The the thing is, is that when we decided to buy a really nice set of um, pots and pans, we ended up with a whole battery of Le Creuset. So it's basically the only thing we use. Um, wow. Wow. I mean, uh, we have a couple of other stuff, a, a couple of other things. I got a couple of things as gifts that I use for certain things like, um, okay, I'm taking mine off, like nonstick, things like that. Sure. Okay, so I'm just blending my melted butter with the milk and water. And now I'm just going to dump in, you dump in your cup of flour all at once and stir, stir. Don't be afraid. I mean, don't, sp once it's, you don't, you want to be careful that you don't splatter it all over your stovetop, but you want to really just stir it. As the flour soaks up the liquid, just okay, stir I'm, it really, I'm really stirring, kind of vigorously. I'm, I'm stirring pretty vigorously. Okay, and you're going to see that it forms into a bowl of, it kind of gathers together into a dough, but you want to keep working it. Folding it, pressing it, and the heat is off, with, right? Well, my, the heat you're going to put it back on the heat, so you okay. just basically, but but it's okay. You can turn it back on. So just keep working it until there's no more. F you see no more little bits of flour, and it's smooth. I'm going to show you what mine. I'm going to try and show you what mine looks like. Okay, so this is what mine looks like. Whoops. Mine ends up, looks kind of okay. If you can see, it looks smooth now. It's smooth. I see no more bits of flour, and there's nothing at all stuck. It lifts completely off the bottom of the pan. Mine is not there yet. Mine is mine is still um, okay. Liquidy, like a, a very okay. very thick bechamel is what mine is like right now. Ooh, maybe you didn't add enough flour. Because very, very quickly it should form into a dough. It's not formed into a dough yet, but it's, it's, it's thickening. I, I, I put in a cup of flour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's not either. You only added one cup liquid? One cup of liquid. Total. Total. Okay, add a little, add some more flour. It's, it, it is thickening, though. I didn't have it on the heat. Maybe that was a problem. Uh, no, really shouldn't. Okay. Your, your quantities should... You should have a dough by now. Okay. Well, it's, it, it feels like it's almost at a dough. I can add more flour if you want. Okay. Add a little bit more flour. Yeah, add this, a little bit more flour. The problem is with flour is that it depends on... Flour is one of the only ingredients. I don't want anybody to yell at me on, on social media for this. It's, an, it's one of the ingredients that, that the weight, the, the real quantity, the weight of flour varies greatly depending on how you measure it into a measuring cup. Okay, but this is... So... But I have... Look, look can, now, now it's, one, it's in one piece now. It's a dough. Okay. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it back on the, he on the heat, a medium-low. Okay. Maybe you want to lower your heat a little bit more, okay? Right. Yep. And now what we're going to do is we're going dr to dry it out. So over the heat, we're just going to stir it. Just, just keep stirring it and turning it. Stir it, turn it, okay. lift it off the bottom. You want to make sure it doesn't burn. Yep. And bas basically what we're doing is we're drawing it out, so that should help. I'm going to turn yes, my heat up Yes, th this slightly. seems very, very nice and pliable, and it's, not, it's in one piece, and it's not sticking or burning. Okay. Okay. So just turning it over and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep it from burning on the bottom, so you want to keep it moving, but you want to dry it out over the heat. Okay. It also helps cook the flour a little bit more. Okay. So you just do, we'll just, 
Yeah, you just want to do this for like a minute or two. Okay. Obviously, yours might go a little bit longer than mine because mine is pretty dry. Hmm. Do you want to see mine again? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mine, it, I, I, I think it's looking good. I think you'll be happy with me so far. Here. <laughs> okay. Stir it around. Let me see it. Yeah, that looks that looks good. Okay, give it another couple of turns, and then you can turn. Then you can turn it. Uh, you can remove it from the heat. You can turn off your heat. Okay. Okay, the heat is off, and I'll. I'll it's just kind of in a ball now that I'm rotating around. Okay. So, now the fun part. How deep is your... Show me the side of your pot, how deep you, the pot is. Oh, okay. Okay, so now, with our wooden spoon, we're going to stir in eggs. You have four eggs. We're going to stir them in one at a time. And you're going to discover that when you break an egg into it and you start to stir... It's gonna be a, it's gonna be slimy. Just keep stirring, and <laughs> you're gonna notice that the slimy egg is little by little gonna it's gonna beat into the it's gonna be incorporated into the dough. Okay. As soon as you break your egg and Should start I do it now? stirring it, because you don't want your egg to cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of with you know with the back of your wooden spoon and stir it. And just keep work, w kind of work your egg into the dough. Okay. And, and you're going to see it's going to be slimy, and then it's going to start incorporating into the dough. Yes, okay, I see that. This is, this is very cool. I've never done anything like this. Okay, that's why you're on my show. <laughs> and it, gets, it get, goes from slimy to silky. Should I do the next one? Do the next one. As soon as the first is incorporated, do the next. And four times. Break your yolk. It's hard because the egg is so... eggy. <laughs> it's so slimy. It really okay. is, yeah. But it's, it's... Yeah, it gets in. Just make sure you get all your dough scraped from the corners of the pot it feels pretty sticky is that okay a little stick a little um i guess it's just getting heavier with the weight of the egg maybe yeah yeah but don't forget your your kind of lift and turn lift and turn you want to try and keep the um it aerated as well okay you don't want to make it you know don't forget you're incorporating eggs which are going to give it the the lightness Okay. Yes, okay, yes, I'm I adding my third. I'm adding my okay. third. Plus the first time I did this, uh, well the first time, the, the time that I tried it that it didn't come out, I ended up with an, a double egg, a, a double yolked egg and I thought maybe that was part of the problem. Oh, I but see, I, don't I see. But I get those very often. Okay. Yeah. The, th the third is okay. in here now. Should I add the fourth? Okay. Make sure you scrape down your sides. Add the fourth. Yep. Ay, ay, ay. See, now it's a smooth dough, right? Uh, it is... Yes, it's smooth. It Maybe a little... F it's thinner than it was. Is that Okay. Yeah, 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 because you're adding, yeah, yeah, you're adding liquid. I'll show you what mine is like at the end. If yours come out a little, if yours don't come out really well this time, you'll have to try it again um, with more flour. Or maybe, okay. maybe using, um, or maybe using grams. Maybe using okay. a weight, a scale instead of measuring cups. Okay, mine is done. It's all scraped down. I'm going to show you what 
it looks like. Hold on, I gotta get the dough off my hand. I'm here. Okay. I'm going to show you my, these, the problem with Le Creuset is that they're so heavy. <laughs> I know. Okay. Watch mine. It's, it seems to be a little thin, but it's going to thicken with the, uh, see, it's nice and smooth and it drops. Now it should thicken with the cheese. I hope so. Or <laughs> we're going to have a okay. mess. Okay. I don't think mine is so far off from yours, actually. Let me see yours. Not too bad. Okay, scrape down everything on your sides. Yep. So it's all together smooth. Now we're going to add the cheese. Um, okay. Okay, what I did was I have half freshly grated Parmesan, and I have half um, packaged grated Conte, which is like a gruyere. It's like a hard cheese. Okay. Um, I use half I have and half all, I have because all I like the different flavors. And when I made, when I made my cup, I didn't. I, f I think I might have told you not to pack it. You yes. just want to lightly mound. This is my cheese. Per perfect. Okay. okay. Now, okay, that's perfect. What are you using? This what is all, cheese? all Parmesan. Yeah, two, but to your age, it's really good Parmesan. Oh, good. Okay, so we're gonna dump it all in. And stir it all up. Okay, here we go. Yeah. The cheese, the cheese is in. Now I'm stirring it. Wow, okay. it smells delicious already. Yep. And it should thicken. I hope it thickens. I yep, shouldn't have said anything about. <laughs> I should not have said anything about about failing a, a recipe on a podcast because. <laughs> no, my, mine has it thickened. Changing. Mine looks terrific, actually. I, I could eat it like this with a spoon. Mine is... Mine is not going to mound the way it's supposed to. I don't know why. Um, we're going to try it anyway. Yeah, I noticed you saw... Uh, I, I put in my Instagram stories a picture of the ones I made two days ago. And I know yes. you saw it. Right. Yes. <laughs> That's the way they're supposed to come out, big and huge. For some okay. reason, I feel, like, I feel like my batter is not thick enough. But we're going to try Do you want to see batch. mine? Th this, this is mine. That's not bad. Not bad. Mine's, okay. a, little, mine's a little runnier than that. I don't know why. I don't want to add more flour. I'm going to make one batch and see how they work. Now I'm going to check my oven, and I'm right. Okay, so basically what you want to do now, let me move this so you can see. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Let me try one because they don't seem... Yeah, mine is much too runny. But I'm not going to try and add more flour now. So basically you want to take, not a full tablespoon, but you want to take, you want to make a, a mound, like an inch, okay. an inch mound, okay? Separate them because they'll rise and spread. I mean, these you can make any size, but if you make them too big, it'll take too long to cook, and then it might it might burn on the outside. So is it, is this yeah, the right amount for one? Would you say? Um, yeah, pu push it onto your baking sheet, and let me see. Mine are kind of spreading all over, so I might add more flour before I do a second batch. Are you spreading, or are they staying? They're staying, they're staying sort of, I'll, I'll show you. Oh, good. I can't really tell. Okay, well, we're going to try this. Okay, fill up your baking sheet, put, leave, a, leave a couple, an inch or so in between them. Can I see how big yours are? Yep, yeah. 
I'm going to send you some photos I took two days ago when I made them because they came out perfect. See, mine are spreading. And oh, they I should see. Not okay. spread. Yeah, they should not spread like this. So I think the problem is, I don't know what the problem is. Okay. So just keep going. Well, we're going to bake them and see. Exactly. So how long do these last, would you say? Are they best eaten day of? They're best, well, they're best eaten warm from the oven. So make them, I'll do one sheet. They, they make about 25 if you do them the right size and they don't run all over your, <laughs> all over your baking sheet. Um, do them all at once. The, if you have any left over the next day, you'll notice that, they're, that they <laughs> get soft. So you can just pop them in the oven. Um, bake them, just, pr just preheat your oven the following day to about, two, you know, 400. And bake them until they, until they dry out and they crisp up again. But okay. keep, keep, yeah, keep an eye on them. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Okay, then what we're okay. going to do is... Actually, I think my dough will work if I fr if refrigerate it for a little bit and then bake the second round. So basically what I do is you can bake them this way, but what I like to do is put a little teeny bit of egg wash on the top and then sprinkle a little bit more cheese. So basically beat a little egg in a little bowl, an egg in a little bowl. Do you have a pastry brush? Yes, I do. Great. And then I, I need to fill up another pan because actually um, I fit, let's see, 12 onto this baking sheet. Does that sound right? Yeah. And then I... Um, yeah, I have 11. Yeah. I have another one here, but I'm not... I may have made these a little too large because I'm not sure I have another... Uh, well, I'll see another 11 left in the batter, but... Yeah. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. There's that, so I'm going to brush them now. Okay, what you're going to do is, because the dough is very delicate, you don't want to brush them, you'll just dab it. Okay. You'll dab it with a little egg wash, just a little bit on the top. And then we're just going to dust a little of the extra grated cheese on it. So this will give it a okay. nice, yeah, this will brown it a little bit and give it a little crispy top. But it'll help the cheese stick to it. I hope mine rise. So in Florida, you, you have cheese puffs, not gougere, right? In Florida, we have um, fried alligator balls and hush puppies, and we don't have gougere or cheese puffs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then just dust a little bit of, of grated cheese on top of each. And okay. then we're going to bake them. We're going to bake and see who's rises. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I should make up my other pan before we put it in the oven, right? Um, I'm, I'm only doing one pan okay. for now. Oh! My son was right. Wait, hold on. I lost my earbud. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, okay. At least I cleaned the jam off my stovetop. You, you don't want to bite into a gougere and, and find, oh, there's, there's, a, there's an okay, apple I'm earbud in there. a little bit on so it doesn't weigh them down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like Galette des Rois. You find the charm and you win the <laughs> prize. <laughs> okay, mine look pretty well. I'll, I'll show you mine in a second. They're, they're not running, but they're not, well, well, we'll see what the finished product, we'll see what happens. Okay. I'm covering them just a little dusting of, okay. of extra cheese. Yeah, okay. And, and I'm going to turn okay, my camera. Just lift up your. 
Well, okay. No, I, no, hold, do them like this. No, I want to see the side. Can you lift up your oh. pan? Yep. You, so you can see mine are flat, um, which, is, uh, which is not correct. Yeah, yours are a little bit better than mine, but they're, they're both, I don't know. Well, we'll try it. Let's put them in the oven. Okay. And going in the oven now. And I'm just going to double check the time. It's 16.33. Let me find my pen. I don't like talking to Siri, so I always do this stuff manually. So yes, that's 16, good. Um, so we want to do them for about, well, we're going to check them at 55. We're going to check them in 20, 20-ish 20 minutes or so. All right, so now what should I do with my leftover dough here, or batter? Um, I'm just keeping mine on the stovetop until the next, until it, well, I'm going to cool mine, and then I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight and okay. make the rest tomorrow. But Terrific. you could leave them out, whoops, instead of looking at my, um, you could leave it out and just do your second batch afterwards, um, or put it in a bowl and put it in the fridge for overnight. So. Um. Well, if, if they come out well, I guess I'll just do it right afterwards because they're, they're going to be irresistible, which I, I'm hoping they will be. <laughs> I, I'm hoping too. Well, the good thing about baking is that normally, even if they look a mess and they don't come out right, they usually taste good anyway. <laughs> that's, the same with, that's, that's the same with cake, with anything. You just don't, you, you don't serve it to your guests. You eat it all yourself because, you know. <laughs> I see. I see. Okay, so let's see if that works. Okay. Oops. Should I open my oven, Jamie? Yeah, I'm going to take one out and, and cut it in half and test it. Let me see. M I have mine, mine, I would say mine are, are, are golden brown on the top. Um, should, I take, should I take out the tray? Um, wait, I'm going to test one. Why don't you, can you take out one with a, I can, oops, <gasps> mine fell on the floor. That's okay. Yes. Um, five second rule. You can test one. See, mine did not rise the way they did the other day. So I think next time I make them, I'm going to test the flour a little bit and I'm going to cut it in half because if you don't cook them, you can always leave them in a couple minutes more so they're not eggy. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to take out one and... Uh, yeah, mine are, f mine are good. See, they didn't rise. I I'm going to post pictures, so you'll, you'll, I'm going to share pictures of, of what mine looked like two days ago. So you'll see how perfect ones come out. Um, hold on, let me find my oven mitt. <coughs> mine are coming out. And then I'm going to ask you more questions. Okay, so meanwhile, I ate one of my gougere. I, I did too. So it was mine, delicious. Mine came out flat. They usually come out round and puffed, but um, it's very light inside. It's, um, it's very airy, and it's crispy on the outside. Oh, that's not too bad. Flat. Can you see mine? Uh, just like mine. <laughs> it's and delicious, see, they, though. They, yeah, it's all puffed up inside, but... Um, well, we'll have to try them again. <laughs> so keep the, re you know what I would do? Well, you're going to make the rest. The next time you make them, um, if they s don't seem thick enough, the dough, put them in the fridge for a okay. little bit and see if it firms up.